Go, and I like that kind of pace. Like very few grapplers can maintain that kind of pace rhythm the whole fight. There you get the stats on both fighters. Same age. Same age. Tim a little bit heavier. Uh, I would say um, Lucas is the more accomplished. Nogi, overall. Nogi yeah. world champion and absolute world champion from two years ago. Yeah. So Barbosa does have the chops, Nogi as well. But as you mentioned, Sprig is very, very aggressive. And in these types of tournaments, it's it's really those aggressive competitors that can kind of come out of nowhere and surprise you a lot of times. So I think this uh, mat area is about to get small. I think <laughs> it's going to be too small for these guys. And yeah. That means that means good news for us. It'll be fun to watch. And I, I'm going to lean towards Lucas as a favor for this fight. Just, yeah, me too. You know, he's been on a roll, and uh, he's proven to be a very intelligent competitor. But I, you never know. I, I would venture to guess, Robert, and correct me if you, if you disagree, but I don't think that there's going to be any guard pulling in this match. No, I don't think so either. Unless it's one of those things where one of them is like way behind on points and you just have to try something different. I don't see it uh, happening. Barbosa's uh, stand-up style, uh, without the gi, with the gi, it's a, it's a little bit more traditional judo, Greco-Roman style. Uh, Tim Spriggs, uh, I would say just based on um, seeing him compete Nogi in the past, maybe a little bit more traditional uh, American folk style wrestling. Yeah, and uh, I think they're equal, evenly matched when it comes to their stand-up, which is why it's hard to pick a favorite really for this fight because of that. I think I, I don't see any of them. I think whoever ends up on bottom will be definitely at a disadvantage. Right? I, I think that they're the, both these players prefer to be on top, and that's where they're strongest. Yeah, oh. yeah, very aggressive right off the bat. It's funny how a lot of times like they're exchanging those those ties and they start slapping each other. Yeah. It gets contentious very very quickly. Because you know you know you're reaching hard to pull someone's head down, and the line between that and a slap is so thin. Yeah, it turns into a. Sometimes it's not intentional. You're just like really wrestling hard. But you know, in wrestling, I know that people they they club each other. You yeah. know, and it's not personal; it's just they're just wrestling. Whereas, I've seen them get into arguments at BJJ tournaments over this right here, more times than I can count. It happens all the time. But the referees literally had to stop has to stop the fight. You know, penalize one of the competitors or it's, both. It and and as a referee, that can be a really hard line to toe sometimes. Of when, when you start to feel something get out of hand, as you mentioned. Yeah. Well, there's a difference between reaching and like looking for impact yeah but the thing is the impact works it is efficient you know you ever been clubbed in the back of the head it's almost it feels like you're knocked out for a split second and you get like a strong wrestler club you in the back of the head it's like holy cow man like this is this th it throws you off right of course it's not the intention here but it does work you mentioned once, once again with these ties sprigs Barbosa tying up here in the middle on the mats here at the IBJJF. Uh, Lucas with the Heavy single. Let's Grand see Prix. if he can finish that. I consider the single leg to be the most important takedown in all of Jiu Jitsu. If I had to choose one takedown to be good at, it would be single. I think it works. It's fundamental for MMA, BJJ, Gi No Gi, self defense, you name it. It's such a, an important position you can go at. And, and so w what aspects of the single leg here do you think uh, is important for Barbosa to control? So if you're Barbosa right now, what are the fun nice. and beautiful finish here? Yeah, he just has to stay tight. Like, if anything, man, like I think Barbosa almost waiting too long. Like I normally recommend people, if you get a single or if you get a sweep, you don't want to be waiting. You just want to finish it. Like why they just, you know, get to it? Because I think the longer you wait, the, the more likely your opponent is to find his balance and defend. But he was tight on that single. Tim could not free his leg in. Barboza got the takedown. Seven minutes left. Not good for Tim. Barboza here in the close guard of Spriggs. And that fist in the neck there from Barboza. So it's, it's an old school fist in the neck. Robert. He's just trying to break that underhook. Like Tim's got a really dominant head control there, and that and that fist in the neck is annoying, and it's not going to choke you or anything, but it's going to create the space to do exactly what you know Lucas just did, free himself. Yeah, Tim's in a tough spot now. He's going to be very aggressive from guard, but Lucas very solid on top, very difficult to catch sweep. 
Yeah, Barbosa is going to be really hard to sweep, I think, from the top position here and establish a uh, top control on. I actually, having walk, watched and commentated the Nogi World several years ago whenever he was able to capture the absolute title, uh, I don't know that I saw him on his back once. Yeah. Now that I think of it, I can't. I don't remember seeing him on his. I, I mean, I, I remember when he fought Felipe uh, Andrew at the Pan Ams maybe a year ago. Not this year, last year. Felipe actually did sweep him, got on top, you know. But like it was, it, it, I think it's the only time I ever seen Lucas on his back. Really, I don't recall him playing guard very much. I'm sure he's skilled there, but he's definitely more of a top player. Briggs now down 2-0 with a little over five minutes left to work. And still moving. Like, Lucas is he's still trying to stand. Like, you know, I, I, no one likes that guy who's winning a fight and closes the guard or just stays inside a closed guard and doesn't move. No one likes that. The guy who wins like that doesn't like his own game, I'm sure. But, you know, Lucas is, is he's trying to stand. Yeah, you have. You, I think there's a there's a fine ba balance you have to take as a competitor sometimes, where you don't you definitely don't want to shut things down too early, but you also don't want to uh, expose yourself to unnecessary risk. Yeah, it's um, um, it's a tough one because you know, of course, the fans want to see flying armbars all the time, but this is their job. Like this is how they pay their bills. This is their living. This is their careers. So you know, they they it's it's normal that they're gonna they're not gonna be taking risks every second. Like and that's just to be expected. And something we may may not have uh, harped on enough here today, Robert, is that we have 40, 40 grand up for grabs here today. USD and, and fifty total. We got like forty for the champ, and then ten for the second place. So that's a huge cash prize. Uh, biggest one IBJJF has ever uh, given out. Yeah, it's one of the largest prizes ever given. In all of uh, grappling. To a, yeah. And so, I mean, when you're watching someone like uh, Barbosa here, and you may say, be saying, well, why doesn't he more aggressively try to maybe pass a guard with a lead? Well, I mean, $40,000 $40, in your bank account might be a really good reason why. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of cash, man. And, I, and I'm happy these guys are getting paid. They deserve it. Barbosa here with some risk control on top. And he is, he does... He is continuing to look to stand. Um, from this position here with his posture forward, it's going to be difficult to break the closed guard, but he is trying to stand, get some posture so that he can open the guard of Spriggs. Spriggs is doing a good job of keeping the guard closed. I think he, he probably does have some concerns about opening the guard up and exposing himself to, to Barbosa, maybe advancing yeah, the position. I, I think yeah, Tim just wants to, he's trying to keep Barbosa like, in front of him. Like Barbosa is very aggressive on top. and. You know he's going to be a Tasmanian devil if, if Tim opens that that guard. So I don't I don't think Tim I, his ideal goal is to open guard. I think he's just going to keep attacking from close. And but Lucas, it's it's hard to pull off those swoops from close guard too. And you know Nogi, like once again you don't have a whole bunch to hold on to. So it does make the oh he's giving a penalty to Lucas. I agree with that. Like I initially yeah. said that he was being aggressive on top. He, he's kind of slowed down a lot. And fair enough. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets another one soon. You know, I've, I've heard people say before, Robert, that you know, if you're on top and you're in, in the closed guard, um, one of the worst things you can do is to try to take a break. Is that when you take a break, that's when you expose yourself? Yes. Is that something you'd agree with? I honestly, I get impatient in both positions, like I top and bottom. I don't like to be the guy you're not attacking from the bottom because I feel like I become a target. And the same thing when I'm on top. Like I almost like panic when I'm inside closed guard. I don't like to be there because I feel that like the best thing that can happen is nothing. Nothing is the best case scenario for for a guy like Lucas right now, right? And then okay, he's winning. You know that's a good scenario for him from a tactical per perspective. But I don't like it. I feel because I can't attack my opponent. I feel like I'm a sitting target. The way I look at this is like imagine a sniper with an infinite amount of bullets. And no matter how far that target is, if you have an infinite amount of bullets, eventually it very may well hit that target. And that's exactly how I see myself inside someone's close guard. I want to get out of there as quickly as possible. I recommend standing up right away. Like, don't even just go. Like, stand up and, and you know, I'd rather deal with the, 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 the sweep attempts from standing. Oh, Lucas, maybe with the back attack, circle to the back. 
Yeah, and Spriggs, Spriggs actually opened up his own closed guard there, and I think he's seeing the short time, as you can see in your view there, one, 147 left to go in this one. Yeah, week. normally like two minutes left, like they, they start switching gears, and like I have to try something. But see, this is what happens. Yeah. Lucas is such a dominant top player, like Tim didn't have a choice. Like he really, I feel this fight went against Tim the second he got, you know, uh, Lucas got that single, and it was just downhill from there. And this is and this is really the marks of a veteran competitor, right, Robert? You've got someone like Lucas who who may be biding their time, but they're using the points against Spriggs here, where he was forced to open the guard because of the time. Yes. You know, using the points, using the scoreboard against your opponent. It's interesting, we were talking yeah. about side control a little bit earlier. Barboza actually able to establish side control there for a moment, but Spriggs able to so recover It's so hard here. to catch. I, like, I... Like, I try to be as, you know, like I teach, as, you know, a lot of aggression from side control, like not just hold the pass. I mean, it's something that we all, you know, strive for, but you just look at how many submissions you see from side control, no gi at the highest level, very few. It's hard to finish. Mount, even less so. Very difficult positions to finish from. But I think, uh, um, yeah, like I insist on the back. I think that where it's at. Of course, your opponent has to turtle up for that because if they stand flat on their backs, then, you know, then it becomes even more defensive. But... Spriggs getting his yeah, guard pass here Passes again. again. Maybe north-south. Barbosa maybe looking for uh, an arm here. He's looking for the neck. Spriggs is able to, to, to defend. I, you know, I think you know, some of these guard passes here are, are really the result of Spriggs getting more and more aggressive here. Yes, exactly. Like, like Spriggs is opening up, and then he makes himself more vulnerable points, but at this point it doesn't really matter. He doesn't have a choice. question is, like, is Barbosa going to look for the kill now? We are here in the quarterfinal rounds. Um, advancing on still means you have, you know, two more matches if you will, if you want a chance that or not a chance that if you want that 40k in your bank account. So nice mount there by Lucas, racking up the points. Let's see if he can go for the kill at the end. Doesn't look like it. Tim with the good head and arm defense there with that hand on the inside. Yep. And we're going to see our biggest point disparity of the day is Lucas the Hulk Barbosa advances over Tim Spriggs. So, Tyler, would you be would you agree with me if I said? Out of the three matches, it's been 50% standing, 50% ground. Uh, yeah, I think I, I think I that's think 50, very, it's, very, it's, very, it's, very, very. It's why I'm saying Nogi. I feel like it's more and more like 50-50. We saw Patrick and and and, and Joan Gabriel was 100% standing. Yep. And then we saw Trator and Banza, and it was all ground. Mm -hmm. And this right here is about 50-50. 50-50. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. probably a little bit more time on the ground, even though the match I feel was really decided because uh, yeah, on, on the, the takedown. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, and I think I, I think if you were to compare and contrast that against uh, versus the Gi, I think you would see maybe something a little bit different, and I think it speaks to the point.